Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the ETF for the S&P 500, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. In addition to that, we're also going to take a uh, look at the FANG stocks. So stay tuned. Let's start with the diamond, the ETF for the uh, Dow Jones Industrial. On this weekly chart here, as you can see, the price is still inside of this distribution here this uh, high volume distribution and it's in the uh, lower half of this distribution so if the price could get back above this uh, high volume node this high volume area which is the uh, upper range of this week's expected move then we can see the price come up uh, work toward this 343.50 area and possibly work toward this upper edge of this distribution at 356.70 basically coming back up to these uh, pivot high here now if the price is uh, unable to get back above the upper half and remain to be in this lower half then watch this 325.82 this pivot low if it break this pivot low then we could see the price work down toward this 315 area and try to catch this pivot low and looking at the daily chart here, you can see these are the ranges here. So the important thing is to watch what the coming week is to see will the price come back up and try to take this uh, pivot uh, low here that broken down from. And that's basically getting back above this uh, upper range here at this 340 area and see will it be able to work up toward this 343.53. Now, if it is unable to uh, come up and take out this pivot low and instead it come down and break this lower range here and get beneath the uh, 327.70, then watch for this pivot low here, which is 325.82. And that will be the next potential area of potential support to keep an eye on. And looking at the SPY, the SPY is sitting between two volume distribution. Here's the... Uh, uh, one of the uh, volume distribution and a small volume distribution here. So it's sitting right between these two. So it uh, have to decide which one to attack. If SPY could uh, move above this upper range of this weekly expected move, then we could see the possibility of the price get uh, moved back to into this 460 level up here. But if it decides to come back down and take out this lower range of the expected move, the first level to uh, see would it be able to find support is this high volume node here near the uh, 411. And if it decides to uh, break below this level, then we could uh, look for the price to come down to this lower range or the lower edge of this small uh, volume distribution at 403.74. Or the 404 level and looking at the daily chart this is the pivot low that we need to see the spy to take uh, you know to reclaim and that is uh, 43301 so if we could uh, come up and reclaim this pivot low and get above this upper range of this weekly expected move fill this gap then we're basically looking for price to uh, try to get back up to this 460 area now, if the price break uh, below this trend line, come down and take out this lower range of the expected move, then the level of uh, uh, support at this high volume uh, node is at this 411 level. And if it's uh, unable to hold this 411, then we're looking at this 403.74, these uh, pivot low down here. And if you are interested in my uh, daily trade plan for the SPY and also the E-mini S&P 500 future, Go check out my Substack page. I publish a daily trade plan and give a little bit more detail uh, level, intraday level to keep an eye on for each trading session. And for the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, we see the prices right inside of this high volume area here. So right now, we are basically looking to see what it be able to come up to this trend line here and break this trend line and get into this distribution here and work back toward this uh, 390 level and uh, if it is unable to uh, get to this high volume uh, area here instead to come back down and dip below this lower range of the uh, weekly expected move then we'll be uh, watching this 348 
this level here to see whether we're able to provide some support. And if we break this level and able to find support, then we can see on the longer term, the price could come down to this 318 area. And looking at the daily chart here, you notice that last week it filled this gap here on Friday, came up and filled this gap. It's trying to reclaim this trend line that it's broken down from. And right now it is sitting right at the trend line. So next week we'll see what it be able to come up and break this trend line. And if it could, then we'd be uh, looking for the price to work toward this 390 level. But if it come down and break this lower range of the expected move, then we'll be uh, looking at this level here, the uh, 348, basically these pivot low here to see what it be able to find support here. And if it is unable to find support at the 348, then we'll be looking for the price to possibly move down toward this 318 level. And looking at the IWM, the ETF for the Russell 2000, on this weekly chart, you can see that the uh, price been pretty much in a range bound between 201 and 165 for over a year or so now. And right now we're sitting at the lower region of this range. So if it is unable to get back above this upper half, you know, basically getting above this high volume node here and get back above this 185, then it has a high probability of coming back down and possibly break this 165 level. And if it does, then uh, the price could work itself down toward this 142. And looking at the daily chart of the IWM, we see that there is this pivot high here that it needs to take out in order to break this downtrend and put in a higher high and possibly fill this gap. So it's key for IWM to come up and take out this upper range of the expected move for the coming week if it is to uh, uh, avoid coming down to break this 165. Now if it take out this lower range in the coming week and take out this pivot low here, which is somewhere around 167, 167.46. So if they take out this pivot high, then there's a high probability that we could see the price work itself back down toward this uh, 165.25 here and see what it be able to find support here. And this is the lower edge of the, uh, the range. This, this edge here of this uh, weekly uh, range here, we see this, uh, this consolidation range. So it's key to uh, hold above this 165.25. And if it uh, doesn't, then uh, there's a good possibility the price will uh, work itself back down toward this 142 level. Now let's take a look at the FANG stock starting with Apple. Here's on the weekly chart on Apple. Got two level here. The potential uh, support is down here, 164.31. And the uh, system is somewhere around this 180. Also, I have the uh, upper range and the low range for this week's uh, expected move. I will post the table on this expected move at the end of the video. So you could go and pause the video and then copy those numbers. But right now, I'm basically looking for Apple to possibly uh, pull back and come down and test this 164. And here's the daily chart of Apple. You see, this is the upper range, and I also have a trend line coming down, basically like a channel here. And this is the 30-day uh, uh, moving average cloud. And as you can see, that is bumping up against that, and it's been uh, declining. So unless it can reverse itself and come back up, it seems to be making a series of lower low and lower high. And uh, if the Apple break below this lower range, then I'm looking for Apple to uh, continue to make a uh, lower low and come down here for this uh, 164 level for potential support here and see what it get a bounce back up and possibly come back up to this upper channel. Now, if it comes up and uh, get above this 180, I'm still looking for potential rejection up here at this trend line or this upper uh, range of the uh, week, weekly expected move. So I could uh, just wait for Apple to come up and see uh, what the price action is and see if we get a rejection back down, then push us back down and uh, work it below and come back down to this 164. Unless it could break this trend line. And then what I like to see is the uh, possibility of maybe doing this a uh, little bit of a, you know, break this trend line, put in a higher high and then a higher low and then push us up here. 
and uh, get up to this pivot high. Then that will uh, maybe uh, turn this around and get Apple reverse the trend. But right now I'm looking for Apple to possibly come down, you know, maybe uh, bounce off this uh, low range and push us down into this level here and uh, put in a uh, lower low. Neo and Tesla, you see that after the January low, Tesla has been making a series of higher low and also higher high. And here the 30-week uh, uh, moving average is also trending up. And here are the ranges for this week. So we're basically looking for Tesla to continue to move up and possibly get up to this 313, 314 level. Now I do have a support level down here at 212. So we'll be uh, watching if it come down here at 212. And that might be a good trade location to look for a bounce here. And here looking on the daily chart of Tesla, you see this 30-day moving average cloud is trending up and also the price is above that. And right now, we're basically looking for a possibility to continue to move up and bump up to this trend line here, basically get up to this upper range and see what it get a uh, rejection here and pushes back. But if we break this trend line, then we're basically looking for Tesla to come up and take out this high here, put in a higher high, and move toward this 313, 314 level. Now, if Tesla come down and break this range here, this lower range, and put in a uh, lower low compared to this, this paper low, we still be uh, looking for a possible bounce off of this trend line here because this is just could be a part of the pullback and if we could uh, get a bounce here, then we basically could play a bounce back up to this lower range and eventually moving back up here to this trend line. Now, what I'm saying in the past uh, few weeks is that unless Tesla break this trend line and also break this pivot low, we are still looking at a bullish type of price action for Tesla because until it break this low, it is still in the process of making a series of higher high, higher low, uh, moving up toward this 313, 314 level. But if it break this pivot low, then we could start making a lower low and a lower high, and that will reverse the uh, the trend. And for Netflix, Netflix came down to this trend line here, and we're going to be watching Netflix to see what it be able to hold this trend line and bounces back up to this uh, upper resistance here near the uh, 402 then see would it be able to break this resistance. But if it doesn't, then we basically are looking at a possibility for forming a lower high, then get a rejection back down. Then we'll be looking at this 349.80 or the 350 level for the next level of support. And if that doesn't hold, then we basically are looking for Netflix to move down to this 317 area. And here looking at the daily of Netflix, you can see this 30-day moving average cloud is trending down. And the price got a nice uh, bounce off the trend line last Friday and also Thursday. So right now it's sitting at this lower range of the expected move for this week. So if it could stay above this uh, lower range, then we are looking for the possibility of moving up to this 402 level and possibly break this upper range here. Then probably uh, be uh, encounter some resistance and push us back down. And then we will see how uh, the uh, price action looks. Uh, would it be able to put in a higher low and reverse the trend up? Or would it basically, this is just a, uh, a lower high and then come down and break this lower range of the expected move and put in a lower low by coming down to this 350 area. Meta seems to be bouncing back up right now after this uh, pullback here and seems to be able to you know, found support here at 389 here. So right now, we're basically looking for Meta to see what it be able to take out this high. And if we could take out this high and break above these, uh, this upper range, and be uh, looking for the possibility of moving toward this uh, 353, 354 level. Now, if Meta pull back and break below this lower range, look for this 289 for potential support. And if we could hold this level, then that would be a good location to possibly looking for some potential long here uh, and uh, put a tight stop just below it. And that would be uh, maybe a nice uh, little bit of a uh, small pullback, you know, high or low, and then pushes up here. And if we uh, take a look at the daily chart here on uh, Meta, 
you can see that it is uh, reversing this 30 day moving average cloud. And right now it seems to be uh, heading back up here toward this uh, 326 level here, this high. So watch this level here. If we could break this upper range, then we'd be uh, looking at this level here at uh, 353, 354 here. Now, if it, again, if it breaks this lower range, look for potential support here at 389 and see would it be able to find support and get a uh, nice uh, little bit of a bounce and put in a higher low, then we could play a bounce at least back up to this lower range and possibly move up toward the upper range of this week's uh, expected move. Google has been making a series of higher low and higher high on a weekly basis. And you can see that it is on its way to try to take out this high and put in another higher high. So we are watching for the coming week to see would it be able to take out this high and come up to this upper range of the uh, weekly expected move. And on this daily chart, you can see Google is trending nicely up, uh, you know, ever since the uh, low here in the March time frame. And you can see riding on this uh, trend line, although it broke uh, a little bit down here and hugging the trend line for a couple of weeks before it uh, reclaims it uh, with some conviction on Friday. So we'll see would it be able to take out this high here and come up to this upper range of the expected move. Now, if it uh, breaks below this lower range of the expected move, we need to keep an eye on this 126 level here to see would it be able to find support. And if it doesn't find support here, then, uh, you know, we could be start looking at uh, Google uh, might be in the process of forming a uh, lower low and lower high. So uh, be careful when it uh, get down to this 126. Now, if we do see a bounce off the 126, then we possibly could take a uh, look for a uh, potential long setup to play it back up to this uh, lower range, at least uh, to this lower range. And uh, we get lucky, it might even uh, come up and take out this high and push us up into the upper range. But again, you know, on the downside, keep an eye on 126. On Amazon, we saw a rejection from this uh, level here, somewhere around 146. And right now, it seems to have found some support at this 123 area. So we're going to keep an eye on it to see what it be able to bounce back up and attack this upper range of the weekly expected move. And looking on the daily here, you can see that it's got a gap here and also this 30 day moving average clouds is trending down. So right now it's also broken this trend line here. Now, of course, we could also be uh, looking at this possible trend line and say it got a support here on this trend line. But in either case, if it come down and break this low range, then I'll be looking for Amazon to come down to this 114 level. Now, if we could stay above this trend line, then I'll be looking at this upper range and then see would it be able to break above this upper range and then make a uh, higher low and then push us up to 145. Or would it just get rejected? So if I see some price action like this and come down, then I'd be uh, looking to uh, play this on the downside to this 114. But if it could come up and break this upper range and come back down and possibly maybe do a little back test in this area and then push us up, then I'd be uh, looking at a potential long to play up to this 146 level. And for Microsoft, recently we saw this shooting star with a long wick on the uh, weekly, and that's quite bearish. And you can see that it came down, put in a low, and then now got a uh, lower high and then also a lower low. So right now it seems like it might be uh, coming back up. And uh, if it unable to take out this high here, then still be forming a lower high. They'll be uh, looking for rejection to come back down to this 309 area here and possibly take out this low, put in a uh, lower low. Then we'd be uh, watching this 292 level for next level of potential support. And we take a look at this daily chart here. You can see that Microsoft right now is basically trending down on this uh, lower low, lower high. So if it uh, could uh, come up and break this range and take out this high, then come back and do a back test, maybe somewhere around here to put in a higher low, then that could uh, maybe reverse this pullback downtrend. And then we'd be uh, looking at the potential of 351, 352 this level here. 
But if it is unable to get above this range and take out this high, then it is still making a series of lower high. Then watch this 309 level here and see would it be able to hold support. And if it breaks that, then it basically put in a lower low. Then we are looking at this 292 level. And looking at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is still putting in a series of higher low and higher high. So right now we're basically looking for NVIDIA to see would it be able to come up and put in a new all time high. If it is unable to do that and come down and take out this 408.55 area, because this basically been tested multiple times. So if we switch over to the daily chart, looking at this level here, this 408 or 407 area, and if it come down and break this level, then we'd be uh, looking at the possibility for NVIDIA to move down to this 366 level. Now, if it could come up and take out this upper range, we still need to see it, would it be able to take out the all-time high and put in a new all-time high to continue this higher high, higher low type of price action. So it would be key to watch this 480 level for this week and see what it get a rejection. If we get a rejection from this upper range, then keep an eye on this 408 because that would be a key level to watch. If it break that 408, that could be a uh, beginning of a little bit of a more substantial pullback for NVIDIA. And here are the ranges for this week's uh, ETF and also the uh, FANG stocks. So you might want to pause the video if you want to uh, copy it down. And if you find this video to be informative and useful, be sure to help promote this video by giving a like. And also if you are new to this channel or you are not a subscriber of this channel yet, click the subscribe to subscribe to this channel. It really helped uh, support this channel. Thank you for watching and stay safe.